Have you ever considered relocating to the state of the Green Mountains? Do you intend to retire or simply stay in Vermont? For many of us, it's probably not a horrible notion. According to data, Vermont has experienced a population boom since the pandemic began around two years ago. This unassuming New England state suddenly became well known. The top state for incoming moves, according to the United Van Lines Movers study, was Vermont. In essence, they examine each of the 50 states and sort of break down the data into, for every 100 movements. How many people moved and compared to how many left? In Vermont's example, 74.3 people moved in while 25.7 people left. New Jersey ranked last on the list. In contrast, they are virtually exactly the opposite, with 71 persons leaving for every 29 who moved in. Is it the most precise research? No, but does it offer you a sense of the state's current situation? Absolutely. Here are 10 things you should know before visiting Vermont in case you're one of those people who is considering doing so. Number 10. It's a fairly rural area. Vermont is among the most rural states. In terms of population, they are in 49th place. Wyoming is the only state with less residents. Additionally, Wyoming is known for being an excellent area for people who dislike other people. Leave your neighbors if you don't like them. Moving to Wyoming in an effort to avoid a stalker's ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend move to Vermont if those items sound very alluring to you but you prefer maple syrup to beef jerky. In Vermont, there are just 643,000 people. Their rural population was 60% in 2020. 98% of the state is made up of rural land. There are no significant cities there. Only a few medium-sized cities exist there. There are lots of adorable small rural communities there. Number 9. The Great Outdoors There are numerous outdoor activities in Vermont. One of the advantages of living in such a rural state is that a lover of the outdoors will adore it. It is among the best states for camping, fishing, mountain riding, and hiking. Their skiing and snowboarding are legendary. In fact, it's a surprisingly sizable industry for this tiny state. Insane winter tourism exists in Vermont. Vermont might not be the greatest state for you if you don't enjoy being outside in the winter or the summer because one of its best aspects will likely be lost on you. For those of you who enjoy being outside but may not be interested in activities like skiing or hiking, in this state, gardening is wonderful in the spring and summer. It's a shame that the winters here seem to drag on forever. 8. The Cost of Living Not the cheapest state to live in is Vermont. In reality, Vermont is the 10th most expensive state in the Union. Overall, local living expenses are 17% higher than those in the nation. In addition, Vermont has the 8th highest housing costs in the country. New England as a whole is frequently a bit pricey. Just a little bit better is Vermont. They really do have some wonderful features that make it a really alluring state, after all. Additionally, it costs a little bit more when it is highly alluring. And given Vermont's popularity, I'm certain that their cost of living will increase a little bit more over the next few years. Perhaps a little bit quicker than the majority of other states. Number 7. They start talking politics. That's correct. Vermonters enjoy discussing politics and do so openly. One of the states with the most overt political expression is this one and it occurs on all levels. State, municipal, federal, and it here, everything is covered. Bernie Sanders was running for office a few years ago. This reporter works for an unknown station. He was visiting several locations and speaking with people about the candidates in various states. And he stated that people in Vermont are open to discussing politics with you and appear to be less likely to become agitated or furious throughout the talk. They're willing to have an open, respectful discussion with you about it. He had that encounter. So, I'm not sure. Everyone has a unique experience, and we'll see it in the comments area, I'm sure. 
Sixth, a peculiar economy. In some areas of Vermont, business is booming and locals are prospering and making good money. However, there are still areas of the state that are having difficulties. Additionally, a large number of those nations are currently working to recover from the opioid crisis. They took a lot of damage. Additionally, many of Vermont's industries are seasonal. This has several consequences, such as forcing someone to work a second job in the winter or in the summer if they're working winter jobs. So on and so on, a lot of individuals travel from other states to, say, work on the ski slopes. Therefore, it's generally best if you work remotely, have a job lined up before moving, are retired, and don't actually need a job. Agriculture is one of Vermont's largest sectors, yet it only makes up 2.2% of the state's total GDP. Vermont has all the conventional industries, and only 3% of people are employed in agriculture. There isn't much mining or industry there. Although they do have some forestry, it only accounts for roughly 1% of their total economic output. Contrarily, tourism makes up over 8% of Vermont's GDP. And while a lot of that is seasonal, as I just mentioned, the jobs they do have pay slightly more than the norm for most states. One of the highest average earnings in the nation is found there. Number 5. The Seasons as we all know, Vermont's winters can be very harsh. Not only is it frigid, not only is it snowy, most of the time, everything is muddy and kind of nasty. Yes, places like ski resorts and similar structures are lovely and fantastic. However, the typical Joe must struggle through that for a significant chunk of the year. However, fall sort of makes up for it. If California and Florida shine in the summer, Vermont does so in the fall. It is breathtakingly stunning. People frequently recommend visiting the Grand Canyon, the West Coast, the Empire State Building, the Golden Gate Bridge, El Capitan, and Yosemite as well as Old Faithful, the Rocky Mountains, and the Great Smoky Mountains while in the United States. You are continually being told to check those out. The Vermont leaf changing season, however, is one that is frequently overlooked on these lists. Now, this also occurs in New England states like Maine and New Hampshire. However, I believe that Vermont outshines the other New England states. There is obviously no ideal time to visit in order to view it because it is a seasonal phenomenon. However, the color change starts in the middle of September and lasts until the first two or three weeks of October. You therefore have a window of roughly four to five weeks to catch this. In the past, I did it. The Vermonter, a very cool Amtrak train, exists. It was gorgeous and we took it all the way from Philadelphia to Montpelier. The only real drawback was that it was somewhat dark when we arrived in Montpelier. So, since there was no sunlight, we missed a lot of it. Number 4 is Taxes. In Vermont, they truly treat you unfairly. The situation cannot be avoided. When you receive your first paycheck in Vermont after moving from a place with a very low tax rate, you can experience sticker shock. It's a little rough. Most of the northeastern states, including Vermont, have some of the highest income taxes in the country. So that's why I say that if you're coming from a place with a really low tax rate, like Texas, you might trip. Just be ready for that because they have taxes. Third, there isn't much diversity. In case you were unaware, Vermont is a largely white state. They are actually the most racialized state we have. They were the second most white nation before the 2020 census after Maine. Currently, 95.6% of people in Vermont are Caucasian, or white, or whatever you choose to call them. For both cultural and religious variety, Vermont is ranked 48th and 47th, respectively. Second, it has a strong liberal bent. Everyone who follows politics knows that this is a no-brainer. That the state of Vermont is quite liberal. It participates in the King of the Liberal Hill game with states from New England like California and Oregon every election cycle. 
With 34% of voters identifying as liberal, they are currently the third most liberal state. Only 25% of voters describe themselves as conservative. The presidential election of 2020. They made a huge push for Democrats. Only 30.67% of voters chose President Trump, while 66.09% chose Joe Biden. The entire liberal movement is quite new to Vermont. They were actually a Republican state up until 1988. Actually, they supported the Republican candidate in every election from 1856 through 1988, with the exception of one. And in 1964, that was Lyndon B. Johnson. Now, I firmly believe that politics should never be a factor in deciding whether or not to relocate. That's just my opinion, but I am aware that it matters to some individuals, which is why it is mentioned here. You place a lot of importance on this. You're aware now. First off, it's firearm friendly. Yes, most individuals who aren't from that region of the country find that. Shocking. Vermont is one of the most pro-gun states. I am aware that many of you who are involved in politics believe all of that. You should know that liberals disapprove of guns in their group of whatever, this, and whatever. You know, think about whatever they advise you to while viewing. Yeah, that doesn't truly exist. Oregon and Vermont, two of the most liberal states in the union, are also two of the most pro-gun states. Carry licenses are neither issued nor necessary in Vermont. Registration or purchasing permits are not necessary. However, unless the sale is to a family member, Vermont does stipulate that only licensed dealers may sell guns. Although Vermont permits open carry, there are limitations on magazine sizes. So here are a few basic facts about that. These things are constantly changing. In actuality, I'm filming this a week or two in advance of uploading it. So, who knows what will change by the time it is really uploaded. Now, this is on the site because, you know, some people value their ability to own firearms, their belief in the Second Amendment, and all that wonderful stuff. Then there are those who could be turned off by this. Everyone is unique, and that is acceptable. Of course, individual nations and localities may have different laws, but these are the laws of the state. I should point out that when you go to court, perhaps because you shot someone or anything similar, they essentially follow two laws. The Stand Your Ground and Castle Doctrine. They are very similar to one another, but they also differ slightly. The courts have repeatedly found that there is no obligation to flee if someone enters your home or if you are attacked there, despite the fact that Vermont does not have a Castle Doctrine or a Stand Your Ground law. Some states mandate that you must depart if you have the chance to do so. And only when your life is in danger may you shoot someone. I'm good. Today's video is the one. I hope you all liked it. I sincerely hope you learned something from it. If you believe there is anything else prospective Vermont residents ought to be aware of, please share your thoughts in the comments area. Give it a big thumbs up and let me know which state you'd like to visit next if you want to see more of these movies. Okay, everyone have a wonderful day, be kind to one another.